Hello everyone, and welcome to the second tutorial on how to make a building system in Unity. My last tutorial has gotten so many views and likes that I just had to make another one, and this one is about checking the placement of your objects. Now, if you haven't seen the first tutorial, I really recommend that you do, because this tutorial is completely based on that one. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make a new script. So to see, create C-sharp script and call it something like check placement. It doesn't have to be that, but... It's a simple name for it. You open it up in Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, whatever you use, or whatever text editor you use. And we can delete the update method. We're never going to use that. You can also delete this comment if you want. I usually do that, but you don't need to. And now we need to uh, input two more methods that are provided by Unity, and they use colliders, so we're going to use trigger for this. So we need void on trigger enter, and it might like autofill it for you. Mine kind of messes that up sometimes. Now that we have this one, we need to make another one. It's going to be on trigger exit. We need these two methods to tell when the object tr collides with another object with a trigger collider, so we can tell if it is able to be placed and when it comes out of that collider we can say oh yeah it can be placed now with these new methods we need to make a reference to our building manager script so make this variable right here this is going to just be our reference and then we need to actually assign this variable so in the start method we can just use building manager equals game object dot find and then whatever you named your building manager in the scene is what you would put right here whatever the game object is just put that name there and then you put dot get component building manager and it's that simple so now we have a reference to it now we need to go to our building manager script so first save it go back into unity unless if you already have the script open and open up your building manager script. This is what we have, right? So we need a new bool, or a yes no variable, true or false. It needs to be public. And just do it can place. Pretty simple. Now, in the if statement, where we have uh, our placement thing, so right here, where we uh, are getting the input for our left mouse button. We need to add in the and and sim uh, ampersand symbol twice, which basically means it's going to check for both of these things, and we just put in can place. So if you can place the object, when you click, it will place it. If you can't, it won't do that. It needs both of these statements to be true. Now that we're back in our check placement script, we can use this reference to set the variable to true in both these methods. So we did an if statement. Just to check the tag. Compare tag, sorry about that. A little more performant. If other dot object dot compare tag, you can use any tag you want. I'm just gonna use object. You can use something like uh, blocks placement or obstacle or something, because any object with this tag will allow you to not be able to place on that object. So just like environment things, anything with this tag you cannot build on. And then building manager that can place equals false. Pretty simple right there. And then we need to do basically the same thing in the on trigger exit method. So you can just copy and paste it, except set this to be true. That's pretty much all you need for this script. But back in Unity, we need to set things up, and that can be a little tricky. So back in Unity, we wait for the scripts to compile. And then on all your prefabs that you have, so that these three things that you're using, you need to add in a component. First add a rigid body. Set this to be is kinematic. And you can turn it, use gravity off as well. That will allow the trigger to actually work. And remember to have all three of these presets selected. So you only have to do this once. Add, the, add a collider. It doesn't matter what kind of collider you use. 
I'm just gonna use box colliders. And make sure to set this collider to be is trigger right there. Another thing you might need to do is make check can place so that it starts with being able to place the object in the inspector. And now if we hit play, you can see that if we start placing down our cubes, we can see that we can place it there. But we can't place it if it's in collision with that. Now, all of the things that we just did to every single one of these prefabs can be done in the script when you select the object to add the colliders, the tag, all that. If you don't want to have to do it to every single prefab, you can use add component, um, you get component and change the stuff on it, like to set it to is trigger. And you can use gameobject.tag equals the tag. But I just did it in the inspector for this tutorial's purposes, otherwise it would be too long. It's kind of hard to see when you can't place it or not, so we're going to make a little visualization using materials just to see if we can place the objects and when they are placed. So let's make a new material array. Let's just do it up here, it's fine. And let's just make it a uh, serialized field private because no other script will need to actually access this, but we need to see it in the inspector. So just do material. A little array symbol, the two braces, I think there's no, the two brackets, and just call it materials, or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to need to make a new method, let's just call it update materials, so let's do void update materials. And we're just going to use the variable, the can place variable, to tell what we can what material the game object should be. So we need to get the component of the pending object, the mesh render, and set the material to be materials zero, if you can place it. And let's just duplicate this below it. And put an exclamation point between there, and then change the zero to a one. It's as easy as that. And then also in the place object, method above the pending object equals no otherwise it won't work you do materials equals two remember arrays always start at zero that's why we're not doing one two three and we're doing zero one two instead now also in the update method we're just going to update materials you can put this really anywhere i just put it at the bottom not update there sorry update materials and now we need to go make our materials so so back in Unity, you can make a new folder if you want, or you can just uh, put them in the whatever else you want. So I'm just going to make a folder called Materials. We can move this back in there, but we actually won't really need this one. Just call them, like, can place, can't place, and placed. And now for the colors. I'm going to see for if we can place it, I'm going to go for a nice green and make it transparent. So like 50% transparency is probably fine, but make sure if you want it to actually be transparent, make sure to change this up there to transparent. And then can't place transparent, a nice red. 50% is fine. And placed, I'm going to go for a nice blue. It does not need to be transparent. So now in our building manager, we need to actually set these materials here and make sure to put them in the exact order I put them in. Can place, can't place, placed. So now if we go into our game, we can now see that if we place our materials all right, all right, if we have our objects out here, we can see that they're green, and when we press it, it's blue. Then up here, we can see that it, we can't place it when it's red. And now we can place it, and it's blue. Now, you can use the final material to be whatever you want here. It does not have to be, like, a blue. It can be your master material for all your things if you're using vertex coloring like that. Um, but for the tutorial, I just use these three colors. Thank you for watching this video, and if you want a third tutorial, please leave a like and comment what you want it to be about. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!